Hey, fast food lovers, in defense of the American knife, let's bring back McCarthyism and crush these communist naysayers talking about the American knife not being carburized all the way through, talking about the steel not being hardened. So here's the poop. These Mussolini-type insurgent communist fascist pigs are saying that baking iron used in the American knife video in Tums for two hours is akin to case hardening and very shallow case hardening at that. They're correct, it is case hardening. I did a video on that process where I tested case hardening metal and sugar. But it's not the whole story. I'll show you why. We'll put the process to the test by going back for a second look. So here you see that I have an iron bar that I'm grinding flat in preparation for our test. It's identical to the iron bars used in the fast food knife video. These made up about two thirds of the iron used in that project, while some flattened but um, slightly thicker wrought iron hooks made up the rest. These come up to just about 2.35 millimeters thick after they're ground flat. I never really measured the flattened iron hooks but I estimate they're around four millimeters thick. I looked at the video, they have little lips on the end from grinding that make it hard to judge thickness, but that's somewhere in the neighborhood of four millimeters. All right, I'm marking up this iron bar and then we'll cut it in half so we can test both halves. One half will be carburized, another half will function as our control. I don't really know why I'm marking it, <laughs> marking it up. There's like a million ways to tamper with this experiment despite doing that, but hey, Commies be tripping, and you gotta do what you do. We'll put one of our iron bars in a container with Tums and two other iron bars, which we'll get to later. Then we're going to weld up our container. I'm using air quotes when I say weld. Um, air quotes are ridiculous, and I hate them. So when I say air quotes, I'll be distancing myself from them by putting the air quotes in their own air quotes. It's quite something to watch me do. Uh, I wish you were here, um, but I'll be doing double air quotes from now on, okay? So that'll go in the oven for just over two hours at 1900 degrees. Now this is important. So our container was at 1900 degrees for two hours, but it's been an hour and 15 minutes coming up to temperature in the oven and then several hours cooling off afterwards. So the actual time it spent at carbon diffusion temperatures is probably close to three hours maybe more three hours and 15 minutes something like that so hear me now i i'm not a metallurgist but as i like to point out i spent about 15 minutes uh, felt like an eternity reading about case hardening on the internet and watching a video before i ran out of cheetos and pepsi at which point i entered a severe dopamine deficient state and had to return to playing call of duty as fast as i could but before that stupor set in i clearly recall everything I read and I consider myself an expert in this whole business air quote air quote uh, okay so let's get this iron out of here and see what we get here's our control piece of iron we're going to spark test it as we expect not really much in the way of sparks some thin sparks that don't flower or burst. And here's our freshly case hardened other half with lots of sparks that look like baby eagle talons passing out ammunition. No, those are little bursts or flowers as what we call them. They indicate the presence of carbon. I'll grind off about three millimeters from the end, then etch it and our control piece of iron uh, to look at the carbon gradient. High carbon steel etches black or dark gray, while lower carbon steel uh, doesn't really change colors that, that much. All right, let's talk about case hardening and everything I know about it. The higher the temperature you achieve, the less time it takes for carbon to maximally penetrate into the steel. The lower the temperature, the longer it takes. What is the maximum penetration? That's a good question. So I've read figures ranging from 1.2 millimeters to 2 millimeters for processes similar to the one I'm using. What happens is carbon is uh, changed into carbon monoxide and then that gas penetrates into the steel and deposits the carbon. So if it goes 1.2 millimeters, let's look at our piece of iron in a cross section here. Our iron is 2.35 millimeters thick. And if we're getting 1.2 millimeters of penetration of carbon from all sides, well, that's 2.4 uh, millimeters. So we should be depositing carbon along a gradient 
through the full thickness of this piece of iron. If it sits at long enough at high enough temperatures that is. We'll polish up our control and test piece to 800 grit and etch them side by side. That is ferric chloric acid. It's being neutralized with Windex and ammonia. All right, well, there's a lot of carbon about half a millimeter in from every side, as you can see, which is less than I was hoping for, to be honest. But I think if you compare that center stripe of the test piece to the uh, iron control piece next to it, it is a bit darker. So I think that carbon to some degree or another penetrated throughout the thickness of our test piece. Not, not the greatest, but we're not beat. This is America. So let's put our carbon striped half piece that we just made into the forge for about 10 minutes. And in the meantime, we'll circle back to our other two iron bars we carburized and forge weld them together just like was done in the American Knife video. They'll be heated to roughly 2100 to 2200 degrees, hammered, heated, hammered, heated, hammer, for about 10 cycles, which is how many forge welding cycles essentially uh, the steel in the American Knife video underwent. What we're looking for to happen is the phenomena of carbon migration. Carbon will migrate from high carbon concentrations to low ones and from low alloy steels to high alloy steels at a molecular level, not just the diffusion of carbon monoxide. It will also sort of dissolve out of these high carbon concentrated carbides into the surrounding microstructure. So at high heat, carbon is basically on the move. Don't forget this process continues in the forging and shaping of the knife in the original video, but we don't have to go that far here. We've etched it, we've cleaned it up. Let's take a look. There it is, except for a few small tiny stripes where the uh, different metals came in contact for forge welding. The carbon really appears to have spread full thickness now. Here it is under a microscope. You, you really can't see any of those stripes that were visible in the original piece of iron that we tested, carburized iron. Migration is nearly complete. I mean, it's uh, very homogeneous appearing. Now let's get back to our first test piece with the large low carbon stripe in the middle that we etched that first time. It's been in the forge for almost exactly 10 minutes. We'll take it out, grind off a few millimeters, and then etch that too. We've cleaned it up, etched it, and now let's take a look. So this is super interesting, guys. Just sitting at high temperatures without any forging or hammering, carbon has migrated from the high carbon exterior towards a low carbon center. Um, I hope this is it. I hope this shows you guys why I'm confident that the American Knife's carbon content is, full, is there and it's fully hardened. Hey, the American Knife has a bunch of carbon migrators and America is a nation of immigrants. I guess it all fits. Have a good one. I wish I was